Who am I that you would regard it? I'm a dead dog compared to you. You are the king. You are royalty. Your majesty, your reputation, your domain, the favor of God, your power, the anointing. Who am I? I'm a dead dog. What strong language that is. In those times, and still true today, it's just America is the anomaly because there's so much prosperity here. Um, they didn't have golden retrievers back then, okay. Like that's not, he's not talking about a golden retriever like humanely put down and there was a funeral and everybody cried. It didn't go like, when, he, when you talk about dogs in the Bible, let me try to paint it for you. My wife Erin and I, you know, anytime we've been on the mission field, which um, God over the years has called us to multiple places to preach the gospel, India and Africa and, um, you know, depressed places throughout the Caribbean islands and things like that. And, um, you know, we were, uh, for a different reason, we were in Colombia one time, Cartagena, Colombia, and, you know, in a car, and, you know, I wasn't sure if this guy was going to, like, is this guy trying to kill us? And, oh, you did take us where we at, you know, and, and we get out, and, and, and every one of those places, no matter where, Mexico, where, wherever you are, the same dog is there. <laughs> the exact same dog. Like, does he have the same name? Like, the, the exact same dog. And, and there's only one kind of dog there. there. There are no variety. There are no, like, oh, there's a black lab. There's a German shepherd. Oh, oh, is this a poodle? Like, like there, there's, no, there's only one kind of dog there, and there's a whole bunch of them. And most of them, nobody owns them. And they're, you know, they're poverty dogs. They're these little dogs, like, little, like, pointy-eared, ones busted, like, err, like, like and, and, you know, the, the females are pregnant all the time, and, you know, they're, they're mange and bald spots, and one eye's kind of swollen and bloodshot with a fly on it. I mean, this is no exaggeration. There are people here that have lived in places like that. They could talk to you in the hallway all about it. And, and they run in marauding packs through town, and they basically are a substitute uh, for a herd of pigs. They, they eat garbage. They eat dead animals. They clean stuff up and they have disease and fleas and, you know, their legs are usually half busted and they're itching. And, you, you know, you, I've, I've been on trips with people and they've never seen it. They think it's like someone, oh, is that dog lost? I'm like, no. No, that dog is, first of all, it's barely a dog. Just stay away from it. Like, oh, I feel so bad. No, reach down for the dog and try to give it something. The dog will be like, Arr! you know, and then dogs will like come out of the bushes. I'm like, get away from that. You could die of a disease in 10 minutes just being near that thing. When Mephibosheth talks about a dead dog, that's the idea. He's saying, number one, I'm a dog. Like, how, how gross. Like, he, he's saying, this is how I look at myself. I am a, I am a, I'm a throwaway. And not only that, and not only am I a dog in your sight, I'm dead. I'm a rotting corpse of a throwaway next to you, David. I'm a, who are you that you would regard a dead dog like me? That's how he sees himself. I wonder if anybody feels like that because of what you did. Let's be honest. There's some things we've done, things we've thought, things we've said, people we've hurt. If the king of kings walked in here this morning, called your name, he said, Mephibosheth, and he called your name. He said, I want to see you. One, would you have terror of the judgment that you know good and well you deserve? Would you be grossed out by all the things you know he knows about your life? And would you fall before him in fear and trembling and weeping? And say, Who are you? Don't even just go away from me. Why would you regard a dead dog like me? The Bible says, Ephesians chapter 2, that all of us, we were dead in our trespasses and sins. We were dead, like Lazarus. We were rotting in our sin, rotten to the core. The enemies of God, there's no in between. Without being a recipient of the grace of God, without being called and invited by the king into peace and into his mercy, we stand at the wrath of God. We are the enemies of God. The Bible says in Revelation that in our sinful state, without his grace left unto ourselves, we are under the wine press. Listen, the wine press of the fierce wrath of God. And the truth is we deserved it. That's where we are. And if you don't know the Lord, I don't say that gloating. I don't say that like I haven't been there once myself. Everybody in here either was or is under this very moment, the wine press 
of the fierce wrath of God. If David wanted to, he could crush Mephibosheth under his fierce wrath, and he would be justified in doing so. And he says, don't be afraid. I'm here to show you kindness. What? And he deems himself not worthy. Somebody here today deems themselves not worthy. He wasn't worthy, and neither are we. Not by ourselves. Not by our good deeds. What good deeds? Not by our family legacy. What family legacy? Not by what we have to offer. What did he have to offer a king? Nothing. Nothing. There's nothing he can pay. There's nothing he can do. There's nothing he can say. What does David need that he has? What does God need that you have? Nothing. Nothing. There's nothing he can do. That's why he asked the question, what are you doing? In one instant, David calls his name and he changes his life. He says, Mephibosheth, I'm not here to hurt you. Don't fear. I'd like you to eat at the table. And everything that your grandfather flushed down the drain, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 43, the Lord has spoken. And he says, I have, listen to this somebody. I have redeemed you. He said, I have called you by name and you are mine. 